morning, everyone. Let us prepare our hearts for worship this morning. service of the Montebello Plymouth Congregational Church, United Church of Christ. And this is the month of May. We have just started May. And on the first Sundays of each month, uh, a couple of things happen. One, we like to sing happy birthday to those born in May. And another thing we do is we also celebrate Holy Communion. So we're glad that you joined us this morning. Uh, my name is Mitchell Young. I serve as a pastor right here at your Montebello Plymouth Congregational Church. And we welcome you. Speaking of uh, Holy Communion, since you are not here in person, 
I, I have a table set up for our worship uh, broadcast team. Uh, and uh, Miss BJ and Mr. Stephen will come up in a moment when we uh, have our Holy Communion. But for you at home, what I invite you to do, if you haven't already, is to go over to your kitchen, uh, maybe your pantry, and get some uh, piece of bread or, or some sort of food, everyday kind of food that maybe you eat, and bring that to your table. And while you're there, go ahead and get uh, some juice, a beverage, or something like that. Uh, it could be wine, that's traditional, wine or, or grape juice, or it could be any kind of juice. Uh, but something that's kind of like everyday food for you, because Jesus is part of our everyday. And I think that that symbol is very much a part of who we are when we celebrate Holy Communion. So, as you're getting that ready, another thing you can do, since we're all gathered for worship, is we can greet one another with Christ's peace, as we traditionally do in many churches. And I invite you to turn to people sitting nearby you. Or, if there's no one sitting nearby you, hey, can you wish me peace? Because that's what I'm going to do with you. So, I'm going to offer, I, I ask, uh, traditionally we say, peace of Christ be with you. And the response to that could be, and also with you. So, for all of you, peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Thank you. We have a, a couple of announcements this morning, uh, one of which is our Wednesday volunteer group, which is the volunteer group. Uh, we used to call it the Wednesday men's group, but, but now that we've had uh, other people come, not just men, uh, they, they come to help and maintain our campus. Um, a lot of landscaping and um, campus maintenance kind of handiwork. Uh, we will not be meeting on Wednesday for the next couple of months at least. And what we are going to be doing is we're going to be meeting on every other Saturday morning. So we just had one this uh, past Saturday and we had a, a half a dozen uh, volunteers come out to help uh, trim the grass, uh, mow the lawn and, and uh, dig weeds and things like that. And if you can help us out, uh, please give us a call at the office, or you could either uh, do that, or you could email uh, Roger Ng or myself at the church. And so the next time we'll be gathering for our Wednesday volunteer group will be May 16th, Saturday, May 16th, and the, those volunteer times will run from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. So please join us. This is the first Sunday of May. So let's sing happy birthday to all of those who are born in May. And here is our May birthday list. Please, if, if you know someone born in May, then you don't hear their name on here, please let us know at the office and we'll be sure to include them uh, the next time around. So our May birthdays include Kai Aragi, Kelsey Peterson, Blake Sakamoto, Kyle Matsumoto, Matthew Okamoto, Heather Iwata, Mari Mori, Judy Shima, Anna Castanares, Mini Mikata, Jeannie Sunikawa, Yoshi Komaki, Audrey Ng, Alyssa Harado, Federico Olimboyao, also known as Fred, and Ryan Yamada. And we wish all of you a happy birthday. Let's let's bring out the ukulele. And let's sing together. Happy birthday, God bless you. And I, I didn't check in with uh, Miss BJ, but um, Miss BJ, what for Mother's Day we have some sort of special surprise I think coming up. Yes. So, uh, young people, you want to do something nice for your mom? Make sure you're in contact with Miss BJ this week because she has something that she's going to ask you to help with. Okay, and we'll have that surprise ready for you next week. And I hope you'll all join us next week for Mother's Day. 
So those are our announcements for this morning. And let us begin with our call to worship. You can look on your screens, or if you've received the bulletin ahead of time in the mail, you can also look at that. We are called to love the Lord our God. We will love with all our heart and soul. We are called to love the Lord our God. We will love with all our mind and strength. We are called to love the Lord our God, and we will love our neighbors as ourselves. Come, let us love our God and share God's love in this time of worship. As we gather this morning, let us sing together, Love the Lord.
are starting a new worship series, and I'm calling this worship series, Pass It On. You know, there's a lot of things going on right now, and especially things that you don't want to pass on to one another, namely uh, this deadly virus that is going global. But there are a lot of things that we do want to pass on to one another as people of faith. And one of them we celebrate at this very table. We remember that time when Jesus desired to celebrate Passover with his disciples. And he gathered them together in a room. And they were hunkered down together, perhaps in fear of the authorities. But there they were remembering and passing down this tradition from Moses to them and now even to us. We have this tradition and as Jesus asks us to remember him. He took the elements of everyday living and it became a part of the symbols of who Jesus is to us. We remember how he took bread And he gave thanks. He broke it. And he gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body for you. And in the same way, after they had eaten, Jesus took a cup, blessed it, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and drink. This is my blood poured out for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink of this cup, do it in remembrance of me. I'm wondering how you might be celebrating Holy Communion today with us. I have here bread. I have here some grape juice. But perhaps you're celebrating with something else. Let us know how you celebrated Holy Communion. Maybe you can even take a picture and send it in and we'll, we'll share it together in our church newsletter and we together will be the body of Christ, remembering as we pass on this tradition, remembering Christ and our oneness in him. So at this time, I invite our worship team to come forward and to pick up a socially distanced piece of bread from this table and also to take a, a, a sanitized cup of grape juice and uh, take it back with you to the audiovisual booth and I will take a piece of bread as well. And then our people at home, whatever food they may be having or whatever drink they may be having, we can all partake at the same time. So let us do that as we celebrate our oneness in Christ. Come, for all is ready.
us partake together of our oneness in Christ. Let us take the bread. <laughs> Let us remember Christ's self-giving for us and for the world. Let us receive the cup. Will you please join me in a unison prayer of thanksgiving? Holy God, source of all life, we thank you for this gathering of your children around this special table, celebrated from generation to generation, reminding us that we are one in Christ, even when we are not in the same room. We will pass your love on to others, for we are all your children, created in your image. Amen. And now let us enter a time of prayer. And we want to offer thanksgiving for those that have sent in offerings and donations to our church. Uh, we thank you for your faithfulness to continue the ministry of your Montebello Plymouth Congregational Church. So I remind you that our energies and our resources are claimed by whatever is truly important to us. And if God is the center of our lives, that will be apparent in what we give. From God we have received love so amazing that even a lifetime of thanks is in an inadequate response. So we give thanksgiving for the prayers that we have placed on this altar and we ask for God's blessing. Let us pray. Receive from us, O God, the best we have to give. All that we have comes from you, and we return a portion with joy to accomplish the work we intend to do together in your name. We bring ourselves as well to be blessed by you, so that while we are apart, our words and deeds will continue to be a significant offering. May our lives praise you. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. And now let us lift up the prayers of the people. And we have a few prayer requests that have been received at our, in our office. Uh, we have a, request, a prayer request from Lonnie D. And she's asking for continued prayer for healthcare heroes and special prayers for Sister Lisa, who has picked up a second job working in a hospital as a respiratory therapist where she will be working directly with COVID-19 patients. So for our healthcare heroes and for Sister Lisa, God, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Sandra L. asks for prayers for her brother Stephen, who was, uh, oh, his test for COVID-19 uh, came out negative. You remember we prayed for Stephen last week, so they are very happy to hear that he has no COVID. Uh, he still feels sick and tired and old, <laughs> but uh, Sandra asks to keep him and his family in your thoughts and prayers um, that he will cover quickly and completely, and uh, she thanks all of you for your love and support. And she also wants to thank all those that are battling this personally as well as those in the front lines to help us keep healthy, safe, fed, and sanitary. We are all in this together, is Sandra's prayer. God, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Uh, this next prayer request I actually am going to be sharing last names because uh, one of the families 
that has been uh, quite public on Facebook uh, about their COVID-19 experiences um, and is a, a, a friends with our church family. Um, you may even have seen them on ABC News. I'm talking about the uh, Ramos Young family uh, and Daryl Ramos Young, the father in the family, um, shared something and I, I want to share that with you. He shared that he thought that his coronavirus saga was done uh, but he himself has tested positive for COVID-19. He's bewildered by the test result because he feels perfectly healthy. But knowledge of the test results inspire devoted motivation to hunker down in isolation away from his family, to wear this, his mask and to reduce the chance of viral aerosols drifting in the house, and to wash his hands and scrub down surfaces even more than before. But of course, his biggest concern is whether he could or perhaps has passed it on to his wife, Karen Fay. So far, the rest of the family has tested negative for the virus. And with uh, son Taylor's recovery from the intensive care unit and safe return home, Daryl uh, simply wished for all the neighboring households for safety, to gather under one roof and physically together celebrate everyone's healthy recovery with a, a good hug, a good long hug. But for now, their daily family Zoom sessions still continue and their family reunion under one roof remains postponed. And uh, Daryl says the tables are pleasantly turned now with the kids together in their own house uh, on one camera. So we share with the Ramos Young family in their experience and our hearts and our prayers are with them for God's healing. God, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Robert H. asks for prayers of sympathy uh, for his mother, whose husband, Ed, uh, passed away. So we pray for the family of Gloria in the passing of husband Ed. God, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Lori Kay asked for prayers for Sister Eileen. Oh, and Eileen, by the way, is our music director, uh, and she uh, is currently suffering uh, from a back injury. So let us keep Eileen in our prayers. God, in your mercy, receive our prayer. And we have a few prayers from our youth Bible study, which met on Friday night. Alex asks for prayers for a cure for coronavirus. God, in your mercy, receive our prayer. And Josh asked for prayers for first responders. God, in your mercy, receive our prayer. And Stephen uh, W. Oh, you know Stephen Wu. <laughs> we, we don't need to hide Stephen Wu's name. Stephen, um, this past Wednesday, his grandfather uh, Loy Singh uh, passed away. So we, we pray for the Wu family in the passing of uh, father and grandfather Loy Singh. God, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Let us continue to be in prayer. Almighty God, with so much going on in the world today, we are too often distracted by that which is not important. Help us to reorder our priorities. Help us to look again at the wonderful opportunities you give us to be of service to you by working with others to reach out, to heal, and to help, to call a friend and touch their lives and keep connected. Bring us to the light of your love once again. Heal our wounded souls. Let us love you truly with our whole heart, soul, 
mind and strength. Give us courage and persistence as disciples that your great love and glory may shine through our deeds of loving kindness. This we pray in the blessed name of Jesus the Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us hear now from the word of God. And we begin our pass it on series with a reading from Deuteronomy. This is Deuteronomy chapter 6 verses 4 through 9. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. Keep these words that I am commanding you today in your heart. Recite them to your children and to talk about them when you are at home and when you are away, when you lie down and when you rise. Bind them as a sign on your hand. Fix them as an emblem on your forehead and write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. May God add blessing to the reading and hearing of God's holy word. Amen. Okay, let's get ready for a message. And I have another Easter sticker here. In fact, this sticker says spring. So kids, uh, if you want to put a sticker on your mom or your dad, oh, or you can pretend to put one on the family time box, which is right over there. And this one, this nice spring sticker, because we're going to talk a little bit about spring right now, too. So let me put this on the, the uh, family time box. There. Let us pray. God, may your words through the Holy Scriptures pass on to us your wisdom, your power, and your love. We meditate on them now. Guide us, we pray. Amen. To start a campfire, it only takes a spark to ignite the tinder, which in turn lights the kindling which in turn spreads heat to wooden logs. Soon all those around it can warm themselves around the glowing embers. Warmth is passed on from spark to people. And now that we are in the beginning of May, we reflect on what a wondrous time is spring. Trees are budding, birds are singing, and flowers like the ones that we gathered here from the parsonage yard, they're starting to bloom. Spring is a reminder that new life is contagious. The freshness of spring sparks our desire to sing. That's how it is with God's love. Once you've experienced it from spark to fire, from winter cold to spring warmth, you want to pass it on. That almost sounds like a song, doesn't it? Actually, I did borrow the words from that Kirk Kaiser song too, for that introduction. And this morning, we begin our worship series for the month of May that I call Pass It On. Of course, I was saying a little while ago that the initial impetus 
of this series was thinking about uh, was thinking about something that of course the whole world does not want to pass on uh, from one to another the novel coronavirus more commonly called COVID-19 however for the purpose of our worship series we want to focus on the things that we do want to pass on to one another and our Christian faith has no shortage of what we are encouraged to pass on and to share with others. Of course, there are all kinds of things that you pass on, things that go from one person to another within your family. Perhaps you pass on your name or your DNA, maybe your bad habits. Uh, you could pass on value traditions or customs. Maybe you might even pass on your wealth or, or debt. You can also pass on a smile or a laugh. And I'm sure you can think of many other things that people pass on to each other. The one I want to focus on today is from Deuteronomy. Looking all the way back to the time of Moses and the Israelites after they had found their newfound freedom from Egyptian slavery. Today's reading is part of what our Jewish faith ancestors call the Shema. It's from the Hebrew word that means hear, because that's the first word of our passage today. Hear, O Israel. So that's where we get the word Shema. It's a, a phrase that's, uh, it's, it's a, a passage or a phrase that's repeated twice a day by a, every devout Jewish person. Hear, Israel. The Lord is our God. The Lord is one. You shall love the Lord, your God, with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might, or sometimes they might say, and with all your strength. And in the New Testament, Jesus was asked what he thought was the greatest commandment, and he immediately replied that it was the Shema, this commandment to love God completely. It speaks of the unity of God and calls us to pledge our love and devotion to God. And when you go line by line through this brief passage, you can see how all-encompassing our love for God is expected to be. All your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might that's pretty much your whole being. And of course, when we come to the New Testament and we're quoting Jesus, it should be no wonder that with the Greek phraseology, it would include, and all your mind, to satisfy all you philosopher types out there. And we are to keep these words that God is commanding in our heart. Then comes the pass it on part of the command. Recite them these words, that is, recite these words to your children. So that means that part of the command is to pass this love of God from generation to generation. How do we do that? Well, I'm glad you asked. We talk about these words and commands to love God when you are home and even when you are Away? Is my microphone still on? <laughs> I guess when I'm on camera, even when I'm off camera, we talk about it, about loving God. In other words, everywhere might be a place where you might talk with your children about loving God. And wherever home is love for God, you can be talking with your children. Whether it is as, and whenever you are away, that's another place to talk with your children. Whether it's a supermarket or shopping or eating out at the park, at the beach. Of course, most of these places uh, we can't really go to right now. But you get the idea. Okay, so for now, teach the love of God to your children at home. And I guess I extend my sympathies or perhaps my encouragement to all of you parents who are serving as your children's primary teacher 
And to add to that, please teach them to love God. So, for that's, that's the where. It's at home, it's everywhere else, outside the home. That's where you teach your children. Uh, so, how about where? Okay, so that's the, uh, well, that is the where. That's the where. How about when? Ah, okay, when to teach your children. So, uh, how about, let's see, what kinds of things do you do every day? Is, is, my, is my microphone on? It's working? Okay. Okay, well, I guess every day you're also probably going to have bedtime. That's a good time to also talk to your children. I have my sleeping bag here, even when I'm... Ah, so the scripture says, teach your children to love God when you lie down. Oh, I'm going to lie down just for a moment. Oh, but here's a note. Okay, kids, it's bedtime. Don't forget, love God. Oh. Well, and how about when the morning comes? Oh, we got that covered too. When you rise up, that's a good time to love God. So teach your children when you're lying down, you're getting ready for bed, when you're rising up, that's a good time to t tell your children to love God and to show them that you love God. So what is it? So, and I'm, I'm assuming they mean and all the times in between. So from the morning, from the night, and all those times in between. So basically, what do we have so far? Teach your children about loving God everywhere and all the time. So, so far, passing on love for God to our children takes place everywhere and all the time. And how should we remind ourselves to pass the love for God to our children. Well, I'm glad you asked. What you need to do, the scripture suggests, bind them as a sign on your hand. Love God. You might not have to get tattoos, but you get the idea. They're on your hands. And what's another idea? To remind yourselves to teach your children. Uh oh, I think I may be showing my bald spot. How about binding it as an emblem on your head? That's what's suggested in the scripture. Wow, so far it looks like they got quite a bit of me covered. How about the rest of the house? Well, Let's see, we could go over here. And how about we put them on our doorposts? Right here on the doorposts, or maybe even the gates to our house. That could be another place that we teach our children about loving God. So we're so far, we're saying, love, teach your children to love God everywhere, all the time, and with reminders all over the place, on your person and on your home, to love God totally with heart, soul, might, and mind. So like the song says, my wish for you, my friends, is for you to depend on God, no matter where you're bound, at home, in a mobile home, your vehicle, a hospital bed, or even in prison. Will you shout out love for God from the mountaintop from the deepest valley or from behind your protective mask 
Praise God. God loves you. Let the world know the Lord of love has come to you and that you want to pass it on. Amen. Let us pray. Lord of love, this may be a morning of praise as well as we all recall your ancient commands to love you first, totally, everywhere, and all the time. We will pass this love of you to our children and to other people in our lives. Help us to pass it on. Amen. Let's sing together our closing song for this morning, I Love You, Lord. love God with our whole being and pass this love on to everyone with each socially distanced protected breath in our bodies the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.